Hello and welcome to day five of 40 Days of Habit with me, Grace Marshall. Um, hello from Yorkshire. You'll notice the background looks slightly different today. Um, I am recording this live from um, uh, from Yorkshire, from my parents' house. So if you see people in the background, that's what's going on. I'll talk a little bit about review first, and then I will also come on to Nikki's question. Um, she asked a great question on the um, on, on one of the videos as a comment previously. So um, and the question was. You know, can I give up worrying for Lent, which I thought was a brilliant idea. Um, so I will come on to that in um, in a little bit. But first of all, I just want to talk you through review. Um, there's something about regularly reviewing our progress that helps us to keep us on track. So in, um, in the Stress Less Achieve More workshops that I run as a productivity ninja, one of the key pieces that, um, that I share, that we teach, um, that we put into practice is this idea of having a regular review. Because generally speaking, life is busy, we have lots of things to do, and what we tend to do is we think forward. It's like, what, do I, what, do I got, what have I got to do yet? So what do I still need to do? When we think about to-do lists, it's like, what hasn't been done yet? What do I still need to do? What's next? And, and we tend to be kind of forward-facing in that way. And sometimes we don't look back. So we don't look back at how have things been going? What has gone well? Um, you know, some of you have been following me for, for a while, I often talk about having a ta-da list instead of a to-do list sometimes because it's really useful to celebrate progress. So um, if you're watching live or even if you're watching afterwards, do let me know what your progress is. So the first step of review is reviewing your progress. So what have you done? Um, what did you manage to do? What went well? Um, and actually just take a moment to give yourself credit for what you've done. Um, and that has a really good effect of solidifying that progress because you're celebrating it um, and also gives you motivation to continue as well. It's like, great, okay, I did that, brilliant. And even if you find, because what we tend to do is, say, for example, you know, we're on day five, maybe it, you, know, you managed it for one day and you didn't manage it for three days. Um, what we tend to do is we'll focus on those three days. In fact, it's more likely, statistically, it's more likely the other way around. So if you managed it for three days and didn't manage it for one, chances are you'll be focusing on that one thing that you didn't get right or that one day when you didn't quite manage it. Um, and that's human nature. Um, that's how our brains are wired. Um, so in, instead of you know, having that negativity bias, um, it's actually, okay, let's try and address that bias by saying, okay, what did go well? So maybe day one, day two, day three went really well. And then you can start to hone in on that. What helped it to go well? So, um, yeah, so the first stage review is do. Yeah, what did I do? Um, the second stage um, is, is what, what do I notice? So almost take an observer's viewpoint. It's like, oh, what do I notice about the days when it went well and the days when it didn't? And to almost kind of observe. So, um, you know, was there anything different about those days? Um, what kind of factors came into play? And, you know, what, just start to notice things without judgment, um, without going, oh, I shouldn't have done that, and go, okay, so what helped and what didn't help? And um, you know, and then you know, also what surprised you? So one of the things I noticed um, in my bid to get some more sleep is that the days when I knew that I had to get up at seven in the morning, because you know, we've got the school run and all the usual routines, it's like I knew what time I had to go to bed. The days when I knew I could have a lie-in those were actually the harder ones because part of me was going, oh, well, I can have a lion so I could be a little bit more flexible about when I go to bed. And what ended up happening was that I'd go to bed a lot later and then I almost et up that extra um, flexibility, that extra margin. So, um, so I always end up sleeping worse the days when I could decide whenever I get up. So one of the things I'm learning from that is um, that actually it's, far easier for me to make a decision about when I go to bed. That's what, what I need to do. It's not about when I'm going to get up. It's actually when do I need to go to bed. And then if I have the option of sleeping in, great. That's, you know, that's a gift to me. Um, but, you know, it's not an excuse for me to go, oh, I can go to bed later and then I use up. I almost squander get that gift. So three stages to review is what did I do? What did I notice? And then what learning am I taking away? So when we notice those things, we can then go, okay, what am I taking away as a learning? So I'd love to know from you, what did you do last week in your first four days of 40 Days of Habit? 
what did you notice? And um, so any observations, surprises, um, you know, things you get, oh, that's interesting, I wonder what that means. It doesn't matter if you don't know what it means, just kind of notice it first. And then decide, okay, so what does that mean for next week? What learning am I going to take away from, you know, from this week and take forwards? Brilliant. Okay, so Nikki, I'm going to go on to your question. Um, can I give up worrying? I think that's great. That's a great idea. Um, and it's a great experiment to do for Lent as well. Um, so worrying is an interesting one. Um, there's a quote that says, worrying is using our imagination to um, create what we don't want. And I thought that was a great quote because, yeah, that's what we do, isn't it? We kind of use our imaginations to start thinking about all the things we don't want. And, um, yeah, um, and, and so one of the things that I found with worrying, if you decide, I want to give up worrying, it's a bit like negative habits. So if you want to give up smoking, you just go, I'm just not going to smoke. I might be thinking about smoking, but I'm not going to smoke. But worrying happens in your head. So it's a bit hard to go, I don't want to think about worrying. It's a bit like, um, there's a great book I read years ago called Don't Think of the Pink Elephant. Um, and, you know, and, and as soon as you think that, you think of a pink elephant. Because um, our brains kind of work a bit like Google. So if you type into Google, I don't want Spanish um, holiday villas, you're going to find pages and pages of Spanish holiday villas. So with worrying, um, it might be that you, you might need to be a little bit creative about how you cultivate that habit. So the first thing is you could use the same principles of review in noticing. So noticing when you're worrying and almost noticing it with a, well, I like to call it a compassionate observer's perspective. So not like, oh my goodness, I'm worrying again, but like, okay, that's interesting. I notice I'm doing some worrying. What's going on? What am I worrying about? What am I telling myself? What am I making that to mean? So um, it could be that you start, um, as part of your 40 days of habit, you start a journal where you just know, you know, use it as almost the dumping ground of your worries. So um, whenever you notice you're worrying, go to the journal, just write down what's going on in your head. Um, Brené Brown calls it the, um, the SFD, so um, the shitty first draft. Or if you're talking to kids, then it's the stormy first draft. Um, but basically, it's just like whatever's going on in your head, get it out, get it onto paper and, and, and just do it in that sense of like, I'm not even judging. I'm not trying to make sense of it. I'm just getting it out of my head so that I can see what it is. And then once you get it out on paper, you can then start to maybe play with it. So, you know, one, one camp could, you know, could just be like, let's just accept it and just go, you know what, it's okay that these thoughts are going through my head. Now that they're out of my head, they're onto paper, I can get, get on with thinking something else. I don't have to keep ruminating on those thoughts. So just getting it out of your head can be useful in that way. And it could just be that you notice it and go, huh, okay, so that's an interesting thought. Um, and you just let that one go. So there's one side of it could be about accepting it and just releasing it. The other side, if you notice there are certain things that you keep worrying about, it could be that you play with it a little bit. So um, in my book, I think it, this one comes into both of my books, um, I call it the what if game. So if you have this book, it has been really productive, it's on page 72. Um, but essentially what we tend to do when we're worrying is we do the unhelpful version of what if thing. So it's like, what if it goes wrong? Um, and what we tend to do with our brains is we start um, building on that. So we go, what if it goes wrong? And that would mean... So the example I've got here in the book is, what if I mess up the presentation? And we add meaning. So if I mess up the presentation, I'd look a complete fool, I'd be letting everyone else down, I'd lose the sale, my reputation would be in tatters, there's certainly no way I'd be considered for promotion. And then, you know, there's rumours of restructuring, so maybe I'll lose my job, and what's that going to mean at home? So that's what we tend to do when we're worrying, is we kind of build it up and build it up and build it up. So we add meaning onto that worry. And then what we do is we add evidence. So like, remember that time when we completely fluffed up the presentation or the slides didn't show, or you know, there was that person sat at the front who was like, um, you know, that had their arms crossed and looked like they were really you know, not enjoying it. So what we tend to do is that we, we then kind of build evidence around it. So what you can do with your worries is you can start to map that out, go, how am I doing this worrying? You know, what is my brain doing as part of that? What you know, what's the what if statement that I'm, I'm playing out in my head? What meaning am I adding to it? What am I making that to mean? And, you know, what, um, what evidence am I bringing forward? And when you notice that, you can then go, okay, what happens if I reverse that 
what if thing process. So, for example, um, you can come up with some positive what if statements. So, for example, what if it goes better than I imagine? Um, what if I am good enough? What if it's easier than I think? What if I really enjoy myself? And that would mean that you can then start to go, okay, so at first, all you do is say what if, even if you don't believe it, it's like, yeah, I'm sure it's, you know, it's not that, but I'll just say it anyway. And you kind of write them all down. And then you can add meaning. Well, okay, um, if you know, it does go better than I imagine, then that would be a great experience. Um, I'd land the deal. I'd inspire my team. That would be a great foundation to build on. So you then start to build on that picture. You can add evidence. So, yeah, what if it goes really well? Because, do you know what? I have done my research and I have built up a good relationship and I am a good listener. So, you know, I'm a good communicator. And so you then start to add evidence to that. And the final thing is you turn what if into what is. So you then go, okay, actually, instead of what if I'm good enough because, you start going, I am good enough because I have experience in this. I have done my research. I've been practicing. Um, you know, this is a great opportunity because it gives me an opportunity to practice something and to learn something and to give it a go. So that's you know one of the things that you can do in order to um, you know to, to kind of just play with what's going on in your head. So I'm going to pause there. Tell me what you think. Um, um, let me see. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, that's new. Okay, so Nick is saying, my tactic at the moment, is, which I did today, is to say, okay, I can't control what may or may not happen. So today, I'm going to do things I know I can do and just be productive. Ah, oh, absolutely. That is fantastic. And it is, it's here. As soon as we start noticing, what am I worrying about? We can then go, okay, so what do I want to do with that? And sometimes that is to say, do you know what? It's okay. I can't control everything. Here are the things I can control. Um, so maybe you could just use these 40 days of habit to to be mindful of your um, what your brain is doing, mindful of of you know of uh, anything. You, when you notice yourself worrying, is to go, okay, what is it doing? What am I thinking? And then to decide what do I want to do with that thought. Um, I think when we're deliberate about noticing habits, they start to change because we start to be able to make them more conscious rather than just have it go on in our subconscious. One of my um, other favorite quotes um, comes from Carl Jung. He says that until we make the unconscious conscious, it will rule your life and we will call it fate. So sometimes changing habits starts with just noticing what's going on and then we can be more conscious about what we decide to do instead. So I hope that's been useful um, from the front of giving up worry, but also in terms of um, identifying your own habits, identifying what's going on in here, noticing and then deciding how you want to take that learning forward. I'd love to know um, what you do, what you have done, what you do do, um, what you've noticed and what you decide to take forward into next week. And um, the videos will continue, so I'll continue posting a video tip each day for the rest of this week. Um, as you'll notice, Sunday is a, a rest day, so it'll be kind of all the way through Monday to Saturday. I'll post a tip each day and then... Um, I look forward to seeing you next week. It will be on a Monday again. We'll have a weekly um, live review on here and hopefully I will see you then.